Hey YouTube, it's Jared here, and today we're going to be discussing lucid dreaming. We're going to go over what it is, how to train your mind to be able to do it easier, and I will even recommend a 30 module lucid dreaming course that will take you from having had no lucid dreams to having as many as 2 to 3 per night. Imagine all of the things you would be able to experience if you were effortlessly having 2 or 3 lucid dreams every single night. Before we get started, please like and subscribe to my channel so you don't miss any of my future videos on the topic of lucid dreaming, and not just lucid dreaming, but all things to do with personal growth and self-development. This channel is about helping you reach your full potential, and lucid dreaming is only one small component of that. So what is lucid dreaming anyways? Lucid dreaming is the practice of becoming consciously aware that you are dreaming while you are still asleep and dreaming. Your mind is awake, but your body is still sound asleep. Imagine if right now you were to look at the room around you and realize that it, the screen in front of you, and even the sound of my voice were all just creations of your own subconscious mind. What would you do? What would you do if you knew that you could go anywhere right now, experience anything you've ever wanted to, and have no legal or physical consequences when you woke up afterwards? When you master the practice of lucid dreaming, your mind becomes your own fully realistic virtual playground, something video games or VR goggles will never be able to match up with. Not only does everything look 100% real, but you can experience every tactile sensation as if you were really there. I can recall my own lucid dreams where I was flying through the air at 100 miles per hour. I could smell the freshness and feel the moisture in the air as the wind blew against my face and body blowing my hair all over the place. It really is a surreal experience that you have to have for yourself to believe it. So, again I ask, if you were able to have two to three of these experiences per night, what would you use them to do? Would you storm a dream buffet, chowing down on all your favorite foods without fear of it making you fat? Would you make out with your favorite actor, actress, or musician? Or would you do what I like to do and take to the skies, flying and taking in the surreal beauty of a world created 100% by your own subconscious imagination? The benefits of lucid dreaming are many. The practical benefits of lucid dreaming include the ability to conquer your phobias. For example, you can practice public speaking for a big speech you have to give the night before you give it. When I was younger, I was a bass player in a rock cover band. I used to practice our gigs from time to time the night before we had them, in my lucid dreams. Another benefit would be the ability to express your feelings to someone you never had the chance to, such as a deceased loved one. Even though it's not really them and it's just a projection of your own mind, it still has the same healing effect of as if you had actually got a chance to receive closure with them. The possibilities of benefits of lucid dreaming are absolutely endless and are only limited by your own imagination. So the question of the day for you today is, have you ever experienced a lucid dream? And if so, what did you do in it? Post your answers in the comment section below, as I am genuinely looking for more suggestions and ideas of things to try out in my own lucid dreams. So how does one develop this ability? How does one train their mind to become conscious while they are dreaming? The first step is to develop dream recall. If you can't even remember having had a lucid dream, what's the point in even having it? To train yourself to remember your dreams, keeping a dream journal is crucial. Keep a notebook and pen by your bedside, or, well, you know, since it's 2020, if you have a laptop, that would work too. Every time you wake up, keep your eyes closed and think back in your mind to, what was I just dreaming about? Let your dream come back to you piece by piece and reconstruct it start for, to finish in your mind. This takes practice, but you'll find it becomes easier and even effortless soon enough with consistent practice. Once you have your dream fully remembered, open your eyes and write it down. Later on in the day, when you have more time, go back and highlight all of the people, places, and objects in your dream journal entry so you can easily scan each page and have them be identified at a glance. Trust me, this will make step number two that much easier. Step number two is to identify your dream signs. These are recurring people, places, and objects that continually pop up in your dreams. These will be different for each individual dreamer, and you will find that they change over the course of time. However, there will always be recurring themes at any given point in your dream life. Once you identify what these are over the course of, say, two weeks worth of dreams, make a list of them. Step number three is to train yourself to perform reality checks. Now, 
Once you have identified your personal dream signs, train yourself to do a reality check every time you see them in your waking life. As far as reality checks go, don't think pinching yourself works. As I said earlier, you have 100% tactile sensation in your dreams. That means you can feel yourself pinching yourself as if you were wide awake doing it. My favorite reality check is to simply look at the palm of my hands. When I am dreaming, they will be different than they look when I'm awake. For example, I may have six or seven fingers instead of five. The main thing I look at though is the mole on the second segment of my ring finger. When I'm dreaming, I may have two moles there, or maybe it will be on a different segment of a different finger. Another reality check you can do is to close your mouth, plug your nose, and try to breathe. If you are still able to somehow breathe with your mouth closed and your nose plugged, you can rest assured that you are dreaming. If you have a digital watch that you wear, look at the time on it, then look away and look back. If the time distorts, or if it says a radically different time when you look back, then you are dreaming. So as I said, do a reality check every time you see one of your dream signs in your waking life, and eventually this habit will carry over to your dream life. But be patient as this process could take one to five weeks, depending on how consistent and vigilant you are with this practice. You should also be practicing reality checks every time something strange happens in your waking life. This could be anything that is out of the ordinary. Maybe your girlfriend or boyfriend dumps you. Maybe your ride is late to pick you up. Maybe you unexpectedly get a new pet or a promotion at work. Really, any time anything out of the ordinary, either positive or negative happens, do a reality check. Last but not least, train yourself to do a reality check every single time you wake up. Believe it or not, we dream of waking up when we are really still asleep way more than people realize. These dreams are called false awakenings because we think we're awake, but we're really still dreaming. False awakenings are ironically the opposite of lucid dreams when you think about it that way. The mild and wild methods of lucid dream induction. Once you have mastered the practice of dream recall and reality checking, you are ready to start the more advanced techniques to amplify your odds of having a lucid dream on any given night. The two primary methods are mild, which stands for mnemonic induction of lucid dream, and wild, which stands for wake-induced lucid dream. The mild method requires a strong perspective memory to have good success with. If you are good at remembering to stop and pick up groceries on the way home from work, for example, or remembering to take the trash out when you go out to mow the lawn, this technique would be perfect for you. There is also a way to train your perspective memory to make it stronger, and you can find that in Dr. Stephen LeBerge's book called Exploring the World of Lucid Dreaming. To do the mild technique, when you go to bed, replay the last dream you've remembered in your head from start to finish but do so while paying close attention to anything that seemed out of place or odd that should have signaled to you that you were dreaming. For example, did your house look drastically different? Did your mom have facial hair? Just pay attention to the odd things in your dream and then imagine that this time you notice that they are off and say to yourself, that's odd, wait a minute, I'm dreaming. Then imagine you go and do whatever it is that you wanna do in your next lucid dream. After you play the sequence in your head, repeat the affirmation, the next time I'm dreaming, when I see something strange, I will become aware that I am dreaming. Repeat this affirmation to yourself in your head as many times as you need to in order to really fill it. After that, repeat the entire sequence. Start over at the beginning of your dream in your memory and repeat. Do this over and over until you fall asleep with the thought, the next time I am dreaming, when I see something strange, I will become aware that I am dreaming, being the last thing on your mind when you drift off to dreamland. When you do this successfully, the odds are greatly increased that you will in fact notice something out of place in your next dream and realize that you are dreaming. The wild method involves falling asleep consciously. In other words, whereas with the mild method, you lose consciousness when you fall asleep and then suddenly wake up in your dream. The wild method has you maintaining consciousness the full time. You literally bridge your conscious mind through all of the stages of sleep that precede REM sleep and you watch the dream world form around you until you are immersed inside of it. I have done both techniques, but I prefer mild method because the wild method requires you to pass through sleep paralysis without freaking out and waking yourself up. Sleep paralysis can be quite terrifying as all manner of shadowy, demonic figures and nightmare creatures assail you while you are laying there unable to move and helpless. If you, like many others, are someone who frequently suffers through sleep paralysis anyway though, this technique would be the easiest for you. 
You just must stay calm and wait for sleep paralysis to transition into a lucid dream. In order to do the wild method, you should be sufficiently sleepy but mentally alert simultaneously. Go to bed and just focus on the sensations of your body on the bed. Feel the way the sheets caress you and keep your mind locked in on that sensation. Breathe slowly and deeply and fight tooth and nail to keep your mind awake, like a truck driver on the night shift would. Focus on maintaining consciousness as if your life depends on it. When your body is worn out enough and your mind is awake enough, this is much easier to do. Then you will eventually feel your body become heavy and paralyzed. This is perfectly normal and is done by the brain to keep you from acting out your dreams in the physical world while you sleep, in other words, sleepwalking. The only difference is you are normally unconscious when your body reaches the state when you fall asleep. Don't panic. Just relax and close your eyes while you imagine the dream scene that you want to travel into. Imagine yourself spinning in circles with your arms out while visualizing your ideal destination. Imagine the sensation and really visualize how it would feel to be twirling in circles like you did as a child until you actually begin to feel yourself lose awareness of your physical body on the bed and you feel yourself enter the void behind your closed eyelids. At this point, you should be experiencing the kinetic sensation of if you were actually spinning in a circle with your physical body. Keep twirling and it's only a matter of time until you appear in a dream scene. It may not be the one you were thinking about, but just make of it what you will when you get there. So my question for you all is this, which of these techniques do you prefer, the mild method or the wild method? In order to amplify your success with either of these methods by an additional 50 to 60 percent, you should combine them with the wake back to bed technique. This technique involves setting your alarm clock to wake you up four to six hours after you've fallen asleep so your body is not fully rested, but your mind is rested enough. Then you get out of bed and fill your mind with the concept of lucid dreaming by watching videos like the one you're watching right now, or reading other people's lucid dream journal entries. Once one hour elapses, go back to bed and practice either technique. This strategy will greatly increase your odds of success with either method, the wild method or the wild method. Do you want to maximize the number of lucid dreams that you have per night? What would you do if you were able to have two to three lucid dreams every single night? If you are looking to take your lucid dreaming to the maximum level possible and are serious about getting results, you can get access to the World of Lucid Dreaming Academy in the video description below. This course gives you 30 lessons to maximize your abilities as a lucid dreamer, guided meditation audios, and a private forum to socially network with other lucid dreamers just like you, as well as a 24-7 online chat. This program is literally a lucid dreamer's wet dream. <laughs> Anyways, thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please remember to like and subscribe to my channel so you don't miss any of my helpful guides and tutorials about everything to do with personal growth and self-improvement. Jared out.